I want to shift gears to Obama urges grad students to reject warnings about government tyranny. No, government's only killed 260 plus million people, non-military deaths in the 20th century. Government's killed about 10 million conservatively, according to the University of Hawaii. Also, Chicago Business had a number that came up similar numbers. In fact, do we have the democide graphics we've shown before? Yeah, well, it's fine. I mean, I know we're live, but if you can, while we play these videos, or maybe even pull them up on YouTube. We've done countless reports on democide. We can just play the YouTube, because I know you're busy on that switcher finding all these articles. He came out and he said, hey, basically, it's you didn't build that part, too. You got MSNBC saying your kids don't belong to you, they belong to the state. You've got seven czars quoting Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer in history. He's killed double what Stalin and Lenin killed combined. Mao Zedong conservatively killed three and a half times more than Hitler. And they got frickin' restaurants in Denver, Colorado, and L.A. were trendies living on the back of liberty and free market, on the skeletal remains of it, go and toast communism. You'll just wait when you're in a forced labor camp if we're unable to stop these scum, you fools. They have a relish for domination. They have a relish for slavery. They've got Al-Qaeda murdering Christians and Muslim minorities all over the Middle East right now, and our government publicly funds Al-Qaeda like you're fools, like you're idiots, like you're morons. So let's go to Obama saying, you know, well, government doesn't do everything. It's not, you know, it's not like it's, it's the only thing, but, you know, you didn't build that. So, so, so here he is, diametrically opposed to what the founders and common sense showed. You get a big, super wealthy, powerful government, all the special interests are going to go pay it off to shut down their competition, arrest their critics, and create a monopoly. And then production and diversity and competition dies and you become Mexico, you become Nigeria, you become North Korea, you become Russia, you become France that is collapsing under an average tax rate of 75% right now. You know, Warren Buffett is now making record profits, $49 billion in extra cash, a 51% increase in profit. And they admit in the Bloomberg and Reuters articles that he got it from banker bailout money. He created fraudulent derivatives like Bernie Madoff, but he, he said, I'm too big to fail. So you sit there and pay him money so he can fund deadly vaccine programs to kill people. And then he p pays the prostitute media to sit there and tell you how great he is. This is how sick it is. Let me tell you what the government built. The government built the lowering IQs, the autism rate from 25, one in 25,000 to one in 51, the, the, the Tuskegee experiment, the million-plus dead Iraqis, uh, the tyranny, the shutdown jobs, the sweetheart deals with China to shut us down. That's what government made. Government, the bigger government gets, watch your whole future go out the frickin' window. Let's go ahead and go to Obama quoting Mao Zedong to a bunch of people whose degrees are going to be worthless unless they get a job in government. We, the people, chose to do these things together because we know this country cannot accomplish great things if we pursue nothing greater than our own individual ambition. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. You should reject these voices. Because what they suggest is that our brave and creative and unique experiment in self-rule is somehow just a sham with which we can't be trusted. We have never been a people who place all of our faith in government to solve our problems. We shouldn't want to. But we don't think the government is the source of all our problems either because we understand that this democracy is ours. And as citizens, we understand that it's not about what America can do for us, it's about what can be done by us together through the hard and frustrating but absolutely necessary work of self-government. And class of 2013, you have to be involved in that process. Enjoy the silence. You know, I tend to lay out so much info that Sometimes it gets lost in the mix, but let me just very calmly 
take a deep breath, and go over what you just heard. I, I, I'm sure most of you caught that. He's saying you're part of the government. And how dare people say that we can't be trusted? You're part of the government. And how dare other people who aren't part of the federal family, as Homeland Security calls it, how dare you say that we can't be trusted? So you are the government. You are with the government. We decided to build this big government, the biggest one the world's ever seen. And there are people that say we can't be trusted, but we're a democracy and you want this big government. This big government is run by six foreign banks that steal $85 billion a month in QE3 for the last year and a half, and hundreds of billions before that, $150 billion of it in a year went to Warren Buffett. Last number I saw, $300 billion went to Berkshire Hathaway in the last four and a half years since 2008. I mean, my God, since October of 2008, $300 billion. In fact, guys, show the viewers out there. Just type into a search engine, um, Warren Buffett, biggest recipient of bailout. He'll get a $150 billion number. And But that he got $44.5 billion of that in, from, from AIG. The point is, is that, of course, he's lobbying for higher taxes, and he goes and gives speeches to college people and says, you know, we need to have rich people pay more because he's offshore and exempt and he knows you don't know the details and he's laughing at you. You know how angry that makes me? Buffett, champion of bailout, is also its biggest beneficiary, McClatchy Newspapers. And that's an article from 2009. And let's go into the numbers. $700 billion, that was just part of it, and that guy got $400 plus billion of it. AIG got $150 million of that. All right, just, 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 just get it off there. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, is these numbers grow and grow and grow, and Homeland Security is there to make sure you don't wake up to that. And Obama is up there saying, hey, you're part of the winning team. You're part of the government. You're part of the federal family. Guys, type that in. Janet Napolitano tells federal workers they're part of the federal family. Federal workers told they're part of federal family. They're the family, the La Cosa Nostra, our thing, their thing. And they will get to be like France, where the average person pays 75%, and people that make a million dollars, a million euros a year, it's about a million dollars, they pay 75% of whatever they keep after 75. And it turned out all the bureaucrats and all the insiders and all the socialists last month weren't paying any of the taxes and still aren't and aren't going to. And the French burned down a bunch of stuff. But you didn't see that in our news, did you? There it is, federal family. Yeah, there's, there's Michael Savage covering. Profile of Jan Napolitano. Michael Savage covers it. Point is, that came out a few years ago. The federal family. They, 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 they put out emails going, oh, federal family. What about the American family? So let's play what Ronald Reagan had to say. I'm going to play three or four clips in a row. Even though Ronald Reagan actually expanded government along with the Democrats, at least he had good rhetoric. Hey, if you got a business, you didn't build that. We need a domestic security force just as big and just as strong as our military. This is pure authoritarianism. This is classical authoritarianism. Let's go to these Ronald Reagan clips from decades ago and then look how far we've come with Barack Obama, who isn't even a real socialist. He's run by foreign banks gang raping you. Here it is. Present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. I think you all know that I've always felt the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. But I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedoms that were intended for us by the founding fathers. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. 
You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. And regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would trade our freedom for security have embarked on this downward course. And again, I can't disagree with that. I mean, that's America. That's Thomas Jefferson. That's George Washington. That's what made us great. Socialism doesn't work. It gets a bunch of crooks in. Things are okay for about a decade. Then everything goes bankrupted. And then they rob people even more until everything's collapsed. And even the elites can't get good food or get good shelter, even though they've got people out in forced labor camps. Because forced labor camps don't produce rockets. They don't produce electrical systems. They don't produce cars. North Korea cannot make a car. North Korea has to pay for power out of China. North Korea can't even produce power. And they could 60 years ago. It doesn't deliver. It doesn't work. And instead, we've got a fascist system sitting on top of a socialist system with a bunch of deadbeat yuppies who think they're trendies and think they're liberal when they're authoritarians thinking they're part of the federal family. You got that scumbag federal operative, Obama, and, and, and Romney, who worked for the very same people. He done the same thing. Up there lying to you off the teleprompter how you're part of a winning team, how you're part of a great deal. He's a con artist. That man couldn't speak from the heart if his life depended on it. He's not real. A real president wouldn't be flying around like their God with red carpets. Our presidents didn't have red carpets until about 60 years ago, and it's a joke. They're not movie stars, and movie stars are nobody as well. What counts is the character that you stand for, what you develop, what you build, what you create, the literature you produce, the art you produce. Not reading lines, not reading off a teleprompter. It's disgusting. You know what the red carpet meant in ancient Greece before they became democratized? The red carpet meant they were the gods. The gods walking on the blood of the lesser humans. A stinking red carpet. A disgusting abomination. And notice everywhere they go, they have armed troops protecting them, and they hate the fact that you have the ancient right of self-defense for yourself. Let's go to some founding father quotes that I know will uh, be like high noon to a vampire to those of you that think you're part of the federal family out there and are on power trips. The good news is most of those in the federal family are awake now as well, that they're working for Don Corleone. Let's go ahead and uh, Don Corleone is an angel compared to you people, the fictional character. Let's go to quotes by Adams, Franklin, Jefferson, and George Washington. First quote, John Adams. Fear is the foundation of most governments. John Adams, that's why they stage terror attacks or let them happen. Let's go to Ben Franklin. Here's a quote by Ben Franklin. They who can give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And the full quote goes on to say, and they will not get liberty or safety. They will become slaves. They will be delivered into absolute despotism. Let's go to Thomas Jefferson. Experience has shown that even under the best forms of government, those entrusted with power have in time and by slow operations perverted it into tyranny. Thomas Jefferson. But oh, Obama says don't look for tyranny. Don't look for tyrants. I knew this was going to happen. Hello. Oh, my God. It's so good. You know, I, I had this weird thing. I knew you'd call me when I was doing a live transmission. I, I'm during a break right now. Uh, can I? Uh, uh, no, no, I want to talk to you because it's been a while. Can I call you in five minutes? All right, man, I'll call you back in five minutes. All right, thanks, bye. <laughs> I had to take that call. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, 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 idiocracy. Anyways, uh, let's, let, let's continue here. Second Jefferson quote, uh, let's go to that. My reading of history convinces me that most bad government results from too much government. Thomas Jefferson, that's right. Now let's go to George Washington, uh, who they demonize. Government is not reason, it is not eloquence, it is force. Like fire is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. George Washington. Now let's show you some examples of the tyranny running rampant 
uh, that uh, Obama says don't worry about because none of it's happening. You know, tyranny's on around the corner. No, it's sitting on our lap. It's uh, actually, uh, you know, crammed us down into a porta potty and it's, uh, you know, sitting on top of us. Uh, this is the New Orleans police chief. All the guns will be taken, just like Boston coming and putting people's hands up. Any excuse they've got to come dominate and set that precedent, here it is. You say guns, guns will be taken. Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Today in New Orleans, they got a lot tougher on the holdouts. Police department, everyone home! Not only the flooded areas, but New Orleans' driest and wealthiest neighborhoods, too. Police department! The police and National Guard going street by street, house to house, sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. That happened today in this wealthy neighborhood where homeowners had armed themselves to protect their mansions. <laughs> Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. Chris Montgomery says he'd rather be in Iraq than patrolling American neighborhoods. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. If somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. It was. Yeah, and uh, ABC was salivating over that idea. Now let's go ahead and go to Feinstein on what she plans to do with your guns. Here's Diane Feinstein. We can't have a totally armed society. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. Highly militarized weapons, easy to shoot, big clips, 100 plus bullets in each, large velocity guns, falling into the hands of grievance killers. I carried a concealed weapon. I made the determination that if somebody was going to try to take me out, I was going to take them with me. I recognize it's an uphill battle, but I also know that there, these events are going to continue. Oh, yeah, you smile about that. Yeah, you know, don't you? And then you, with guilt, can blame us when there's an event. When guns frustrate crime, a 49% drop in violent crime, FBI's own statistics. But you hate those numbers getting out, don't you, Witch? And you hate the fact that we show what a hypocrite you are. What about government killing 260-plus million people, mainly with guns? What about that? What about that concern? What about that real threat? That's what we're talking about. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.